What's up everybody? This is a peek behind the curtain. So what are we talking about today? Today we are gonna take a look at some automation that I built in my business to automate everything from customer acquisition to meeting scheduling to customer management to invoicing to payment collection all in one step. My name is Chris Hervishan with SOAR, a better way CPA. Uh, let's connect. Here's how you get a hold of me, Chris at betterwaycpa.com, phone number, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, all that good stuff, as well as Quora. Uh, I post on there every day. So if you want to hear more about stuff like this or uh, other stuff revolving around taxes or outsourced accounting, that's where you can find me. If you want to reach out, this is where you can find me as well. If you have any questions, comments, uh, please feel free to ask away while we're doing uh, this Facebook Live. And, um, you know, post below in the comments section after the video uh, questions you might have, topics you want me to cover in future videos. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Okay, so I'm really excited about this. This is an automation that I built over the weekend. I'm rolling it out straight to you today. Uh, and what are we trying to accomplish? Well, a lot of stuff here, everything that's on the screen. Uh, we're going to collect customer information, add it to the CRM. We're going to book an appointment on my calendar. We are going to handle discount codes. Um, we're going to add the customer um, and a coupon code to a Google Sheet. Uh, it, it, so basically right here, we're using it as a database. This could just as easily be something like Access 365. That's Microsoft Access or uh, some sort of a SQL database, uh, anything like that. But today, for this purpose, we're going to use Google Sheets as our database. Um, we're going to add the customer, the person who booked the meeting, to the accounting software, in this case, QuickBooks Online. And then we're going to send them an invoice, which is going to have a payment link on there and they can pay us. So uh, my Wayfinder is my introductory product. This is the product that I'm using uh, for this. And uh, I'm going to walk you through how I, how I do all these steps. So this is meant to be a template for your business. So this is sort of meant to get you thinking about how you can automate tasks in your business, how we can collect data. And this is a really good example, as you can see from the apps on the screen, of non-financial data being leveraged with financial data, which creates leveraged data. So we can create leveraged data from this process to use it to give you greater insights into your business, help your business grow. Um, and this is the kind of stuff though, where we can take the leveraged data and then populate it into the, into the dashboard. You've heard me talk about dashboards before. Um, this is a really good example of where we get the data, how we store the data, and then how we use the data. So why did this need arise? Well, um, I was thinking on Saturday that, uh, you know, I'm going to go on this podcast next week. I'm gonna, I wanna give the, the listeners something um, for listening in. And so I figured, well, I'll give them a discount code for a Wayfinder. Uh, again, Wayfinder's an introductory product. And I was like, well, how am I gonna deal with the discount code? Um, hmm. And so I started thinking, um, started thinking on some automation that I can put together, and this is what I came up with. In case you're interested, the discount code, I will make it live for y'all, is IMCEO2018. I'm gonna be on the IMCEO podcast next week. Um, it'll post sometime thereafter, but if you wanna use that discount code for a Wayfinder, usually $1,500, uh, the discount code is good for a $199 Wayfinder. I'll show it to you on the website here in a couple of minutes, but it's basically a GPS for your business. If you're not sure where you are uh, and where you wanna to get to as far as where your business is, what you need to be measuring, uh, how you stack up against your industry, that's what a Wayfinder does. It's a GPS for your business. Um, but that discount code is good as of right now. Um, you can certainly use it if you would like. So uh, here's the data flow. It starts with HubSpot, which is my CRM, moves into Office 365, which is actually Outlook 365 for me. So uh, the meeting is scheduled, it sends me an email, um, and then we're gonna use that email to generate more data. Goes from the email to parser. What parser does is it parses out that email. So it's an HTML email. Um, we can't really do anything with that in an automated way. What Parser does is it turns that into structured data and then we can use it in the um, processes that are downstream. Parser sends that, that um, parsed email into Google Sheets. So in this case, it's our database. Google Sheets is, is what would feed the dashboard if we so choose to use that data, as well as QuickBooks, which is further downstream. Google Sheets, when a new row is added to that sheet, it triggers a, a Zapier Zap, the Zap then um, goes further downstream into QuickBooks, sends out the invoice with the payment link and stuff like that. Uh, so that's pretty much what we're gonna cover today. I'm gonna walk you through this step by step. The um, Zap, Zapier, if you're not familiar with it, it is an awesome tool. It will, in fact, change your world. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring that up right now. 
So this is what Zapier is. Basically what it does is it takes all different sorts of cloud applications, links them together via their APIs, application programmer interfaces, which is it's a fancy word for a data pipe, okay? It connects the two data pipes and then it does basically an if then analysis. So if something happens with this application, then we're gonna do this and feed this application to do something else. That's how we get automation. It's one of the ways. A uh, competitor of Zapier is actually Microsoft Flow. They've got a great product as well. Um, but those are like the two heavyweights in this space on how we automate tasks. And I'm gonna take you right here um, when we're talking about connecting apps. This is how we make a zap, right? So Zapier automations are called zaps. Um, we're gonna connect this app. Now, if you see, I've got a couple here, Google Sheets, Gmail, Twitter, Slack, MailChimp. And then right down here, you'll see it says reveal 1,381 hidden results. So what that means is the world is your oyster. Um, if you've got apps in your business, you're probably using a couple of these 1,381 apps. You can connect all these things together. That's how you get automation. That's how you get data. That's how we create data. That's how we leverage data within our businesses, right? And then you connect it with those same 1,386 apps. Uh, so really cool stuff. Now, the thing that triggers this whole process is somebody scheduling a meeting. So betterwaycpa.com, that is my uh, website. On the Wayfinder page, you'll see, you know, it talks about being a GPS for your business. This is the product. And here's the 1500 at one time Wayfinder. This is where we go and we do, um, you know, an engagement where we schedule an hour long video call. Um, I gather information about your business. I put together a report, deliver the report in another one hour video call. Usually I charge $1,500 for that to one time fee. Giving that away with that coupon code for $199. The way to book that is you go to this book now link, right? Which takes you to a meeting. Now the meeting, whoop, uh oh. The meeting uh, tab, once you click it, looks like this. After it loads. Looks like that. You see my calendar, you go ahead and you book it, right? Easy enough. Now that's um, created, if I can find my mouse here, by a HubSpot meeting. And this is HubSpot, it's in the sales module. You get on here, go to meetings, and you can create different types of meetings, different lengths, stuff like that. And you can go and you can edit the information that you collect. So the information that we're gonna collect on <clears throat> one of these uh, meeting requests is right here under form questions. So we can customize this form. It's gonna ask for the first name, last name, email, phone number, company name, job title, so what you do, where you are, that's the postal code. And then a coupon code if you have one. You'll see right here, it's not checked as required. Um, this is all information that we can use later, right? Um, and, when, and then when we're done um, with this particular um, action, we can send these people into an email sequence and market them down the line, stuff like that. If it's something that you do in your business, this is one way to automate that. <clears throat> now, the next thing that happens is I'm gonna get an email once that, once that meeting has been booked. The email is gonna look like this. So you see it's from HubSpot, new meeting booked, the date, the time, phone number, all the information that we just gathered, right? Now, I can't really do anything with this. This isn't, this doesn't, this, it, you know, it's flat data. It doesn't mean anything. Well, it means something. We just can't do anything with it, um, which is a problem to itself. That's where Parser comes in. So that particular email um, that comes into my inbox is going to auto forward. So I've written rules inside of, of Outlook. I'm not going to cover those today, but um, you should probably be familiar with Outlook rules. If you're not, I suggest you look at them. It. It's called uh, inbox or sweep rules, something like that. But you can write rules to how to manage your inbox. So when an email comes in from HubSpot uh, with a meeting booking um, text in it, it's going to automatically forward that email to Parser. And what Parser does is we write rules. So these are all the rules. So the, what we're going to do is we're going to go try to find the phone number out of that email. We're going to find the full name, company name, yada, yada, yada. Now, a way to do that is right here inside of Parser. And we're going to look at the HTML body of it. This is what that same email looks like once it's been parsed. Okay, you'll see it's, it's, kind, it's a little bit, I mean, it's clean, but it's, you know, it's kind of all over the place here, right? So what we want to do is we want to get the phone number from this particular um from this particular email and the rule that's written 
is right here, find the content you need. That's the rule category. And then we're gonna go look at, there's different types of um, you know, ways we can pull that data. That paused on me. Oh, there we go. Um, find the phone number. Right, so Parser is smart enough to know that it needs to go find the phone number out of this text. Um, and then it shows you the check here. This is the phone number. So what it then does, and we'll go back here to rules. See, it says right up here, congrats, you're done. Uh, now let's send it to Google Sheets. This data maps to Google Sheets. So I have a Google Sheets set up and you just map these things one to one, right? I mean, these are the column names in Google Sheets. These are the parser rule names. Uh, I've mapped them so that they're basically the same, same naming conventions, makes it easier to find and work with. And then what we get is a Google Sheet that looks like this. Um, this, is, this should look familiar. This is all the same information that came out of um, the meeting invite and then it came out of parser. So there's tons of insight here that we can leverage when somebody would book something, their name, their email address, all that good stuff. Why is the time that they book something important? Well, if we wanted to do an analysis of so-and-so liked our Facebook page on December 1st, they went and they booked a meeting on the 5th, we can start taking a look, look at lead times and funnels, um, marketing funnels, and then leveraging that to understand our customers and write more or better funnels, um, forecast revenue, things like that. All sorts of stuff that we can we can you know we can use with this. As far as email addresses, you can build custom audiences in Facebook based on that stuff. Um, like I said earlier, you can send these people into um, email automation. The, the 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 insight that you can get from this is limitless. And again, we can send all of this to a dashboard. Now, when a new row is added into the spreadsheet, that's what kicks off Zapier. And here is the zap that I wrote. So you'll, you see it's five different um, steps. What it does is when there's a new or updated spreadsheet or row in that spreadsheet that I just showed you in the Google Sheet, then it will check to see if I have a customer already created in QuickBooks. If not, it will create one or it'll update an existing one if the information is different, but it's the same customer. It'll create an invoice. So in the in this particular case, either the invoice is gonna is gonna get it's gonna get created for a wayfinder, but either it's gonna be for fifteen hundred dollars or it's gonna be for one ninety nine depending on that discount code. And then the discount code, that's sitting in QuickBooks. It's also sitting in that Google Sheet. We can send that to the dashboard as well to analyze coupon codes, who's utilizing coupon codes, how many coupon codes of the, of the same type are utilized, um, sales and savings that that, that drives. That all That is all information that we can leverage to send into your dashboard. Um, it then sends the invoice. It goes straight to the customer. The customer gets an invoice. It looks like this, okay? Um, this is a test invoice that I sent to myself. This is what the customer would get. Uh, and you'll see this review and pay button. You can, the customer is actually able to go click this button. It'll take them out to a secure um, payment site. They can enter their bank or credit card information and pay for it right then and there. So you don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything as far as adding these folks to your CRM. You don't have to do anything as far as um, adding these folks to your accounting software. You don't have to uh, worry about sending them an invoice. The, the automation will do that for you and you don't have to worry about collecting payment. So. For me, when I talk about the workflow, it's an hour meeting, a report, and then an hour meeting. All I got to worry about is showing up to the first meeting. Like, how cool is that, right? It's awesome. Um, automation is the coolest thing, I'm telling you. Um, so if you want, I'll take you through these steps. Uh, this will be fairly quick. So here's the first step. So you, you, you choose the trigger app, app. So what happens in that app? What is the trigger? What's going to set off this whole chain of events? And for this, it's a new row in that spreadsheet, okay? So new or updated spreadsheet, easy enough, right? This is all like point and click. There's no coding here, nothing. Um, like I said, this will change your world. Uh, the, the sky is, is limitless here. Uh, this is where you connect and then here are the options. So that's the name of the sheet, Wayfinder Bookings, the worksheet name, or I'm sorry, that's the workbook. The worksheet name is sheet one, the trigger column is name. So if there's a new um, name in that sheet, then that's that's what's gonna sit off this whole, this whole thing. And then we test the step. We don't need to see that, we know it works. All right, <clears throat> goes to QuickBooks, find or create a customer. So here's the trigger for this. It goes and, it goes and looks for that name or the email address and it finds that customer. If that customer doesn't exist, it's gonna update it. Um, or it's gonna add it as new. If it does exist, it's just gonna update it. 
Here are the options. We're gonna search on the search values here. This is actually um, name, test three, test three, that's a name, I promise. Full name, you'll see it right there too. Uh, and it's just basically concatenating the first name and the last name. Uh, the company, email, um, you'll see some of this data is messy because I was testing it, it's test data. Uh, phone numbers in there, all that good stuff, right? This is super easy. I mean, this is just drag and drop. You go and you click this list and it gives you all the options. You'll see newer updated spreadsheet row. These are all the options that come out of um, Google Sheets. It's super easy, click and, you know, point and click. It will then create the invoice and we'll go through that real quick. Uh, here's the template. Quantity of one, you can put in the description, you can put in the product. Um, and then somewhere down here is the discount code. There's the discount value, right? That's sitting in, in Google Sheets. Um, okay, and then it sends the invoice. Basically it just mails it. I'm not gonna walk you through that, this easy enough. And then this here, HubSpot, creator uh, or update contact, that's just here for completeness to make sure that all the information that's in the prior steps is also in the, um, is also in the, in the final HubSpot uh, database. So I'm going a little bit long today. Uh, I'll, I'll stop that there. But as you can see, there's, there's, there's tons of automation. Uh, it's super easy to put together. Um, and this is the way that we create leverage data. Leverage data equals financial data plus non-financial data. Marry them together, you get leverage data. Leverage data is what we can populate into your dashboards to make um, better strategic decisions. So more information, better information, better strategic decisions. Uh, that's it for me today. Again, Feel free to reach out, Chris at BetterWayCPA.com. There's my Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Quora. Please follow me. Uh, if you have any questions or you want to see different content, new different content, please put it in the, in the comment section here. Uh, be happy to cover whatever you guys are interested in. That's, in. that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to like and share this video. That's super important. It helps me get followers, helps to get the word out. Uh, and it helps to generate better content because we crowdsource it, right? So, all right. Thanks, guys. See ya.